It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. 2017 has been a polarising year for video games in general. On the one hand, we've seen the release of some of the defining games of this generation, as players have fallen in love with new characters and settings, as well as gaining a greater appreciation of old favourites who've been given a new lease of life. On the other hand, this year has been peppered with some of the biggest disappointments in recent years. We've seen games released that, while not necessarily completely terrible, have certainly fallen short of players' expectations, to the point that they've become memes, bad jokes, and parodies. Probably the most famous example of this was Mass Effect Andromeda, which saw one of gaming's most beloved franchises die a painful death, thanks to an unfinished, buggy game. Aside from the, my face is tired, meme, not much of this entire experience has permanently resonated with gamers. Then there are titles like Sonic Forces, not irredeemable per se, but certainly not as universally beloved as the far more popular Sonic Mania that was released just a few months earlier. Perhaps it was the fact that Mania was such a wonderfully fresh yet nostalgic experience that made Forces look so unimpressive by comparison. Whatever the reason, it's safe to say that a lot of people who'd had high hopes for a second Sonic title this year were ultimately disappointed when Forces proved to be such a hollow experience. It's not uncommon for games to end up failing to connect with a widespread audience, and gamers have become accustomed to ridiculing broken, unfinished, or otherwise unfulfilling games. That said, inevitably, some gamers do find joy from games that are, by and large, written off as being bad experiences. Titles like Mass Effect Andromeda and Sonic Forces have an earnest, eager fanbase who accept that the games have flaws, but still get joy from them nonetheless. These gamers are often dismissed by the wider gaming community, labelled as fanbabies for their decision to actively choose to enjoy a so-called bad game. But is there really anything wrong with being a fanbaby, if you're enjoying yourself? Here's a story. A few months ago now, we took our little daughter to play at a new park that she hadn't been to before. She was thrilled, and headed straight for the park's slide, eager to climb up to the top and whoosh down the other side. There was just one problem. Her rubber shoes stopped her from actually being able to slide down. After pushing herself a little bit, she learned that the best way to get down the slide was to scoot along, little by little, in a slow, squeaky journey to the ground. This was far from a perfect slide experience, but she was having tremendous fun. Whee! she called out, as she slowly inched her way down the slide. The moment she got to the bottom, she ran back around to climb up again and have another go. Sometimes, modern games can be a lot like this slide. Slow, imperfect, failing in their intended purpose. Many people will try them once, recognise their flaws, and move on to something else. When a game isn't very well made, this is the most sensible thing to do, as the companies behind these games don't deserve any kind of brand loyalty. That said, this doesn't mean that a person can't have a fun time with a broken game. Fun is fun, and we probably all have guilty pleasures, games that aren't particularly beloved that we hold a certain fondness for. In truth, these pleasures shouldn't feel guilty at all. Whether you're enjoying a game ironically, or choosing to overlook its flaws, you don't need to prove a game's worth to anyone else. If you're having fun, that's all that matters. As such, we shouldn't attack or belittle each other if someone else is having a good time with an objectively poor game. Rather than rolling our eyes or throwing insults at the fan babies who embrace unpopular games, we should appreciate that they've found a way to have fun with something that we are unable to see in a good light. This isn't to say that these games should be let off the hook when they fail. If anything, Games companies who take advantage of their fans should be held in low regard in spite of the popularity a buggy or unfinished title receives. The old adage proves true. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Even if this phrase means something else in its traditional context. This cuts both ways. Just as gamers shouldn't belittle each other for choosing to enjoy unpopular games, we shouldn't be making fun of people who don't like the games that we enjoy. Everyone has their own tastes. And if you find that someone else isn't fond of a particular game that you enjoy, it's not enough to simply state that they should get good or claim any superiority over others. Gaming is a wonderful hobby, and communities that form around various digital experiences can be wonderful and enjoyable. 
it's more fun for everyone if we try to be inclusive and avoid calling each other names or throwing insults. The good news is that when we all work together, games can become even more enjoyable. It's fantastic when people get to share games that they enjoy with each other. When we're willing to see things from someone else's perspective, we might be able to see something enjoyable in a title that's otherwise escaped our interest. This is particularly true of smaller, indie titles that might not otherwise get the attention they deserve. So it's worth letting people know when you enjoy something, and listening earnestly to others to see what they've found that might provide an experience that you'd enjoy. All the while, we can work on putting pressure on game studios to produce the best possible games. There's nothing wrong with being fan babies, and liking games that other people think are irredeemable. If you're having a good time, that's what matters most.